Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Executive Vice President from North American Headquarters at Samsung Electronics, Mr. David Steele. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon, Happy New Year, and welcome to the Samsung Press Conference here at CES. It's hard to believe another year has gone by, and frankly, it's been a very successful one for our company. We had three straight quarters of record-setting sales and profits, and we think that 2010 will go down in history as one of the most successful years for Samsung. Now, before we bring our look ahead to 2011 and our new products, I thought it would be good to take a look back at 2010. In fact, when we were here last January, one of the big themes that we were talking about was the new paradigm of 3D TV. And I know there's been a lot of discussion since then about whether it's been successful or not, but let me leave you with a couple of key facts. Firstly, 3D TV sales have surpassed one million units in the US market already, which is doing better than LED TV sales at the same point in that history a year ago. And secondly, according to MPD, Samsung possesses 70% market share in the 3D TV market. So taking these two together, you can see we're making a big investment on 3D, and we're very optimistic about its future. Today you'll hear about our plans to expand the overall ecosystem for 3D TV in 2011. Last year, also here at CES, we announced Samsung Apps the first application store to span multiple devices with a focus on the television. Samsung apps, already we've recorded 1.5 million downloads onto the TV platform, and we have more than 300 applications that have been specifically designed for the large screen environment of the flat panel TV. Today we'll share with you a very exciting contest that we've been running to stimulate innovation around applications and further develop the smart TV experience for consumers. Now, midway through last year, we announced a new series of phones on the Android platform. And I'm happy to announce there that the Galaxy S series sold more than 10 million phones around the world. Not only did that secure our position in number one position here in the United States market, but it also, by the third quarter, put us as the leading seller of all Android devices in the US. And we added to that strength in the Galaxy series with the launch late last year of the Galaxy Tab, a seven inch mobile tablet on the Android platform. Also, with the first commercial launch of mobile WiMAX and LTE, Samsung is playing a leading role in the development of new wireless communication standards. Now, looking at some of our emerging product categories, we've also seen great success. Our PC business, launched here in the US just two years ago, has seen very rapid growth, and you'll hear later today about our new models for 2011. In digital imaging, we've become one of the fastest growing brands with a reputation for true product innovation, with offerings such as dual view, wireless cameras, and the NX series. And finally, our home appliance business, an area which Samsung has not traditionally been known for, but where we have now become in the top three here in the US market, and we're number one in the premier category of French door refrigerators. We've accomplished all of these achievements while also being very focused on our responsibility towards the environment and sustainability. Our Planet First initiative is a global initiative at the corporate level to make us one of the top sustainability focused corporations in the world by 2013. And I'm happy to say we're tracking ahead of our goals towards that. We've also achieved good results here in the US market under our overall umbrellas of protect, conserve and renew. All of our flat panel TVs, LCD monitors, notebooks, PCs, washing machines, printers and multifunction devices either meet or exceed Energy Star standards. And our national recycling program has already taken back and safely recycled more than 41 million pounds of Samsung products 
at no charge to consumers. Here at CS, we're proud to display our six products selected as Eco Design Award winners. So please take a look in the booth. So, what does 2011 hold in store? Well, our big theme here at CS, and really our theme for our business this year in general, is the smarter life. And the smarter life has three core pillars. It's about smart design, smart experiences, and smart connections. Smart design is about making products which, while containing more functions and more features, are ever easier and more intuitive to use. It's also about making physical designs that are highly emotional, highly appealing, whether you have them at home or in your pocket or in your bag. Smart experiences means delivering a whole range of applications, content, services, games, to a whole series of platforms, and in a way that's really optimized for great UI and great displays. And finally, smart connections means making it very easy to connect all of these products to each other and to the whole realm of services through the internet and the cloud. So over the next 40 minutes or so, we'll unveil some of Samsung's 37 CES Innovation Award winning products. And we'll also provide some information about the keynote speech to be given tomorrow afternoon by Bugen Yun, President of the Visual Display Division. So please listen out for that. Now, we have a slightly different format for our press conference this year. Unfortunately, I am still the same, but what follows will be a little bit different. So we hope you enjoy that. Have a great time at CS, and all the best for 2011. Thank you. Samsung CES 2011 press conference and today's program, The Smarter Life, Agenda 2011. Please welcome your host, the president of Samsung Electronics America, Tim Baxter. Well, thank you. What a crowd we have here today. You know, and it's great to see so many folks here today. You know, this year, we will celebrate The Smarter Life. And it's not just a slogan at Samsung, but it's something we strive to do every day. Earlier, David laid out the pillars of the smarter life. Smart design, smart experiences, and smart connections. We'll discuss what it means, the ideas and technologies that define it, and its direction in 2011. The discussion will also help set the stage for tomorrow's keynote address by President Yoon. Now, in 2010, we saw a consumer's desire to access content like never before. It not only from one device to another, but from the cloud to their TVs, mobile phones, tablets, and other devices. Samsung accelerated this change by providing products that deliver content optimized for each screen. You know, we also forged partnerships with content providers to drive adoption. In 2011, we will continue to push these strategies to the limits of their potential. Now, joining me on stage today will, to discuss the Smarter Life will be three Samsung executives. First up is John Reavy, Senior Vice President of Samsung Electronics America. <laughs> How you doing, John? Pretty good. I'm good. How are you, football giants doing? Oh, uh, no, they're done. About as good as your bets. My bets, huh? Wow. Well, anyway, um, you know, John, one of the best examples of how our products realize the smarter life is in our TVs. You know, in particular, we offer consumer unprecedented choice and control of content through what we call smart TVs. Now, before we get into some of today's main announcement, let's take a look back on the TV market last year. 3D and Smart TV really took their first major steps in 2010. 
So John, tell us a little bit about that. Well, David mentioned a little bit earlier, the 3D market will surpass or has surpassed a million units. When you look back, this is on par with the introduction of LED TV two years ago. So that was widely considered a success. And in fact, 3D TV growth of about a million units will surpass first year uh, unit sales of DVDs, HD TV, and even Blu-ray. People forget that, they don't yeah, they really do. So then when you look at smart TVs, the market's gonna hit about 2.5 million units. So given the climate we operated under, we're very pleased and encouraged by those results. Absolutely, you know, and that's why we're no less bullish about these markets as we sit here today. You know, we expect 3D market to grow sixfold to six million units in 2011. Smart TV is expected to grow threefold and reach nearly nine million unit mark this year. So today we'll be discussing how Samsung will grow our leadership in these markets. Now we'll increase the reach of our 3D in two ways. First, we'll offer 3D on more screens and migrate to even larger sizes of 55 inches or higher, where we saw 65% of our 3D TV sales in 2010. Our 3D models will make up 60% of our television lineup. Now, in the case of smart TVs, two-thirds of our TV models will be smart. This wide offering of 3D and smart TVs will make them even more affordable and more accessible to more consumers. But there's another major driver in 2011. You know, for every seminal launch of new technology, smart design has been a key factor of differentiation. So John, how are we gonna do that again this year? Well, then we reimagine the TV screen in the place that it occupies in your home. Televisions have gotten smarter, slimmer, and more dynamic over the years. But fundamentally, one thing hasn't changed, and that's the bezel that frames the TV and separates it from your home environment. This year, we're narrowing the bezel to create an entirely new view of the television. We're going to take a look over here. Stay with me. Come on, take a small walk with me. So this is three of our new flagship televisions for this coming year. So Tim, what do you think? You know, um, I gotta tell you, I love the picture quality on it, but John, I think, I think we can do a little bit better. What do you think? Now let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. All right. Now, there we go. There we go. Much better, huh? How about that? Wow. Look at that. I mean, it just looks like the Grand Canyon is just molded right on the wall. I mean, in, in a seamless way. It's absolutely fantastic. Tim, what we have here is our D8000. In the center are D7000, both LED TVs, and on the right are D6500 plasma TVs. You know, it's interesting. A year ago, uh, we stood before you and uh, showed a pencil, if anybody remembered, where we showed the thickness of our 9000 screen TV. And I think now we can bring out that analogy again. So I'll take a look at the you, bezel. That's right? pretty amazing. That's, is that the same pencil from last year? What's that? Right? What is that? <laughs> How thick is that, Joe? That is 0.2 tenths of an inch wide. So we've narrowed it down, 0.2 tenths. So what we've done is create a TV at the very edge of design by essentially creating a virtually edgeless TV. So the bezel that's framed the TV traditionally has now disappeared. So why don't we take a look then at the 7,000 as well? Well, 7,000, same thing. The 8,000 is a fully metal 0.2 tenths of an inch. The 7000 also has an acrylic accent around the bezel, but still 0.2 tenths of an inch. And then we have a little different story on our plasma. Great. You know, we think the, the style and designs that we're bringing forth here uh, will represent some breakthroughs, and we truly believe that our designers have raised the bar again in 2011. So, in plasma, through developments of the panel and through technology and design, we've been able to reduce the bezel size and increase the picture size by one inch. So traditionally, you have a 42, a 50, 58, and 63 inch. Next year, we've added one inch, so we'll have 43, 51, 59, 64, all done without increasing the outside dimensions of the set. So we're adding one full inch of picture performance without increasing the external diameter. And we think that this concept, all of these concepts from our 
LED to our plasma plus one strategy are absolutely excellent examples of bringing forth smart design. So why don't we now take a look a little bit about another area that we want to talk about, smart connections. Sure, Tim. Our 2011 high-end TVs and AV products host, feature a host of exciting smart connections. Chief among them is something we call one-foot connection. So I think all of us have home networks today. And consider what you have to go through to connect the device at the home. Not easy. You know, whether it's a PC or a camera or another DLNA device, you, know, you have to connect wires and input IP codes. And I tell you the truth, I was doing it last weekend. It took me about two hours. So he runs the TV. And so yeah, that's, most people take three hours. <laughs> but I took two. So consider uh, the one-foot Samsung connection essentially eliminates that. So now you simply register a compatible device by bringing it within one foot of the supporting cam uh, Samsung router or television. Then anytime the device comes within range of your home network, it is automatically recognized and connected. So that allows for se seamless content sharing across devices within the home. No more messing around with IP. Trying to be a rocket scientist to get your network going. And you know, we, we really believe that the ease of use enabled by these connections is really what helps drive the smarter life. But it's also about choice and control for the consumer. That's right. This year's family of smart TVs comes with a host of new features for consumers to manage their content. We've had over 1.5 million downloads from a stable of about 300 global apps in 2010. It's a lot of content to manage. Consumers are also accessing the content from their other devices within the home. So, Search All, one of our key new features on our smart television platform, enables consumers to search across Samsung apps, DLNA devices on your network, as well as on the web. So a second feature, also called Your Video, will make program recommendations based on your viewing behavior. behavior. So when you combine the full web browsing Samsung, that Samsung smart TVs provide, we think we provide a more intuitive experience than ever for this. It's great. You know, the word intuitive, I think, is very important here. You know, especially as we extend our smart connections into more rooms in the home. In fact, in digital appliances, you know, we fully support the Smart Grid initiative and will begin to roll out products with the ability to efficiently manage power consumption and eventually control appliances using mobile devices. Well, let's start first with content. Today, we are proud to unveil a smart refrigerator with an 8-inch LCD screen and Wi-Fi connectivity. Remember, this is our first foray into the kitchen for a multi-screen strategy and shows how a select number of what I emphasize here, relevant apps like a web calendar, photo albums, and notepads allow the family to stay connected. You know, it's a modern, modern way for us to take and bring forth to the modern family, the modern post-it system. I'll tell you just a little hint. I have three kids at home. That would be great in my kitchen. Keeping a track on them. Just checking. Anyway, while the appetite for content is unrelenting, it needs to be experienced in the right setting. So, for example, the growth and success of our smart TVs will depend not just on expanding the number of apps, but on making sure they're the right ones for the big screen. So Samsung has been helping to create the connected TV market for the past four years. And along the way, we've learned a few things. Now, and I think it's very important to understand, one of the things that we did learn uh, is that the key to a successful TV app is its relevance to the TV. In short, it's not a race to get the most apps. It's about setting the path to get the right apps. So John, how are we gonna do that? Well, one word, developers. Uh, since March, Samsung's been holding developer days around the world to educate and rally the developer community around TV apps. On top of, on top of that, this past summer, we held a Free the TV Challenge here in the United States. We received app submissions in areas such as entertainment, gaming, sports, education, and a host of others. And today we're thrilled to announce the winners that the winners will take home prizes worth a half a million dollars. Is it a half a million? Half a million half dollars. Million. I want to be a developer, by the way. Anyway, but first, let's take a look at some of the finalists. Armchair Astronaut from the development team of Henrik Steen and Ticker Spofford. 
Armchair Astronaut allows users to explore the solar system in stunning high definition by incorporating a combination of real and digitally created 3D content. Jimbox, from the development team of Ryan Robinson and Sean Jackson, Jimbox delivers weekly full-length workouts on demand in a variety of formats. New classes are added weekly so a user never repeats the same workout twice. New mode social TV listing from the development team of Robert Balasek, BJ Kalis, and Bogo Gierkin. New mode provides a social TV experience by trending the popularity of TV listings and awarding viewers honorary badges for checking into their favorite shows. We draw from the development team of Alan Queen, Juan Pablo Neco, Daniel Neco, and Elvia Cecilia. We draw allows contestants to draw pictures using their finger on a smartphone, with players winning points by guessing another player's drawing. You know, I gotta tell you, they, uh, they said that Vegas would never host the Oscars, and I think that's probably as close as you and I are gonna get to uh, uh, hosting it. But, uh, speak, I, speak for yourself, Jim. No, I think I am. Uh, so, seriously, the winner of the Samsung Free the TV Developer Challenge is We Draw the TV Living Room Game. Yeah. We need to accept the award. And the grand prize of $200,000 is James Allen Queen, representing the We Draw development team. Come on up, guys. So for second place, we have the gym box, the third place finisher, arm armchair astronaut, and the People's Choice winner voted, by, voted on by the Free the TV Challenge online community, New Moat Social TV Listing. So let's give all the winners a nice hand, huh? Now, be sure to check out the winning apps, which will be on display at the Samsung booth. And I'm also happy to announce that version 2.0 of the software development kit for Samsung Smart TV is available for public download now. Well, you know, we think that was a pretty cool way to do it uh, and get a little chance to understand what we're doing in the developer community. But let's now shift gears again back and talk about some new cool stuff we have coming. Well, last year, we introduced a touchscreen remote control for our high-end LED TVs. This year, we're making some big improvements on that, John. So last year, it was a uh, full touch screen, but you could not watch two videos at once. So this year, we're introducing a full touch screen device that allows you to watch two video streams at once. So in my case, while my wife is maybe watching a movie or something, I can catch up on the latest baseball action. And it actually has got a, a QWERTY keyboard so you can do uh, chatting with friends. So all this on one single touch remote. You know, but this remote is really just one of the many accessories uh, we're rolling out to deliver on the promise of the smarter life. I'm going to take that. You want to take that? Take this picture here. That'll go with your 75 inches. In addition to the remote and the one foot router we talked about a little bit earlier, Tim, we're also bringing to the market new 3D glasses. So what I'd like you to do, you can put down that remote. Try on these glasses. It's a cool one. Huh? Wow. Even on you, they look good. <laughs> and I know that pains him to say that. I, I pain him. So what we're doing, um, bringing new 3D active glasses that are at the edge of design and technology. One of the questions we faced in 2010 was, how do we make the glasses less of a barrier to 3D adoption? So we've answered that with these 3D glasses that are flexible enough to fit over eyeglasses, and they weigh just a single ounce, one ounce. So very lightweight, un unobtrusive, you barely know they're on. He's a stylish. We're also bringing a Skype HD TV camera for HD quality video conferencing for all of our LED flat screen TVs. And we'll have an assortment of wall mounts, which lets you hang your LED TV much like you would a picture in the home. 
So one additional cool accessory, which I'm sworn to secrecy, I can't tell you about, but uh, we'll show it at tomorrow's pre uh, pr press conference, keynote speech with BKU. And there'll be another cool accessory to round out our stable of accessories new for 2011, which we think provides a complete solution for the consumer. You know, we think this is a very important part of how we are building out an ecosystem of products and accessories that are bringing the smarter life alive. And this holds true as well in our Blu-ray and home theater segment. It is, Tim. First up, I'd like to show you is our BDD 7500 Blu-ray player. And actually, if you would hold that for me, Vanna, I can do it, Tim. It is the world's slimmest 3D Blu-ray player and boasts a three-second boot time. It features two to 3D conversion, and you'll even upgrade stream videos to HD quality. In addition, almost the entire line uh, the entire line of our Blu-ray players will also feature Samsung apps and the search all feature we talked about before. The new HT, HDT, HTD 6730 home theater system also features a couple of key new features. Also features a couple of key new technologies for our 3D systems. The first is called the 3D depth sound. So what that does, it combines, and it's an algorithm that that syncs and combines the 3D sound with the video. The second key feature is what we're calling vertical surround. The sound cascades down vertically, and the result is a more immersive audio-visual experience. And I think that's great. I think 3D sound, I think, is such an important part of telling that uh, whole story. So, John, uh, great stuff. Thanks for uh, Thank spending you, some time with us. Appreciate it. Thanks. You know, we're really kind of showing how uh, we are using innovations in design and technology to bring about the smarter life in home entertainment. Now, these themes will come through strongly in President Yoon's keynote address tomorrow. Let's take a quick snapshot or look at that. to introduce Omar Khan, Chief Strategy Officer for Samsung Mobile, to discuss some of the advancements we've made for a smarter life in the mobile space. You know, Omar, uh, earlier John talked uh, about Samsung's new unified search function, Search All. You know, it allows you to search across Samsung apps and other DLNA devices hooked up to your network. You know, we think it's a perfect example of smart experiences converging across Samsung devices. So let's explore this further and examine some of the content and delivery advances Samsung will make in 2011. So in 20, I mean, in the world of Android-based products, Samsung's really led in three areas: to screen, speed, and content. We're really ready to take it to the next level in 2011 here at CBS. Let's start with the latter: content. In 2010. Samsung's Media Hub application was one of the components that really helped, helped drive the success of our Galaxy products. By aligning with top studios, Media Hub allowed users to download or rent uh, their favorite TV shows and movies to their Galaxy phone or their Galaxy tab, each with video optimized to fit the screen size, the screen resolution, and the video and sound capabilities of their Media Hub enabled device. Consumers like it, huh? The initial feedback has been out of this world. The average media app user team is coming back on a weekly basis to download a new piece of premium video content. You know, and I think that's showing some real stickiness, you know, in customer retention. So, what's new for Media Hub this year? I'm thrilled to share a couple new announcements. So, first and foremost, Samsung is adding another major content provider to the lineup. We've reached agreement with CBS, the nation's most watched TV network since 2008, to bring several of its highest rated and most acclaimed programs to Media Hub for mobile. In the near future, people will be able to buy episodes for or full seasons of CSI, NCIS, The Good Wife, or Survivor 
uh, to watch on their favorite Samsung Galaxy S or Galaxy Tab devices. Samsung's really proud to have CBS join MTV, NBC Universal, Paramount, and Warner Brothers in the Media Hub content stable. Now, in addition to the new content, Samsung will also make new billing options available for Media Hub, including direct carrier billing with T-Mobile in 2011. You know, of course, Media Hub is part of the larger world of Samsung apps. You mentioned earlier the remarkable first-year growth of Samsung apps for the television. Well, today, Samsung apps for mobile is available in 118 countries. 118, that's a pretty impressive number, you know. And, you know, and while the overall growth and reach of Samsung apps is accelerated, the content reaching Samsung devices comes through a variety of avenues. You know, and I understand, you know, we'll be announcing some new devices, right? We are, Tim. You know, we're so proud in 2010 to launch the Galaxy Tab on every major wireless carrier uh, in the United States helping it surpass the 1.5 million mark in worldwide sales in its first quarter of availability. There's two exciting developments in the Galaxy family today. So can we walk over and take Show a look? Show me the way. Let's do that. Well, first we're expanding the options uh, for consumers with the upcoming availability of this Wi-Fi only uh, version of the Galaxy Tab in the first quarter of 2011. This is good. So, I tell you, this I think is really going to extend the theme of choice, right? It does. These are segments, business enterprises, and consumers that want different options. Samsung's not only the leader in producing high-end devices such as the Galaxy Tab, but we're also giving the consumers the most choice. You know, Omar, the Tab has had such a major impact, as you know, on a mobile user experience. You know, but we surely see that there's other segments out there that could really take advantage of this emerging area. There are ten. That would be the next edition of the Galaxy family. The Galaxy Player is the first Google-certified Android-based smart player, boasting a 4-inch super clear LCD screen and running the Android 2.2 platform. It's based on Samsung's smartphone technology and further differentiates itself from devices such as MP3, MP3 players and PMPs through its access to 120,000 applications from the Android market. The player was first introduced in Korea, and we're excited about the possibility of the Galaxy Player coming to the rest of the world. Keep this. Yeah. So let's go see some more things, right? I'm going to put this one in. <laughs> you know, when we talk about devices like these, you know, what we're really getting into, you know, is the delivery side of the smart experiences. And that delivery includes not just the devices, but the platforms that deliver that content. That's right, Tim. There's much to discuss in this area. As we mentioned, we're the number one Android provider in the U.S., and we strengthened that leadership in late December with the release of the Google Nexus S smartphone. This is where you really see the speed. This was the first smartphone to be released on the latest and fastest version of the Android operating system, Android 2.3, known as Gingerbread. The user benefits of Gingerbread include faster user interface, improved power management, and communication options such as near-field communications. You know, Gingerbread is clearly part of a story of an engaging story, you know, when it comes to platform leadership. I get to hold over this. <laughs> We're going to have some other really exciting developments here at CES as well. You know, since 2006, Samsung has cemented its leadership in end-to-end -end 4G solutions, which includes development of the first LTE commercial network right here in Las Vegas. We'll be demonstrating our 4G technology leadership this week here at CES. So are there any other things coming up? <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Tim. A perfect example of bringing speed, screen, and content together is the impressive new smartphone with AT&T in the near future called the Samsung Infuse 4G. This is the thinnest phone available on the AT&T portfolio. And one of the things that really sets it apart is the screen. <laughs> Last year we introduced Samsung's ultra-bright Super AMOLED technology in the Galaxy S series of smartphones. This smartphone is designed with a huge 4.5 inch Super AMOLED Plus display that features sharper images, easier to read text, and improved outdoor visibility. It runs on Android's 2.2 platform and is powered by Samsung's own 1.2 gigahertz application processor to support rich graphics and content. And it's packed in with an eight megapixel rear facing camera, along with a front facing video camera for video chat. So I can take a look and have conversations, video conversations with my kids from days. Absolutely. It's, you know what? That's not it. There's plenty more to come. I would pay very close attention to some of the keynote speeches and the major media events this week. Great. Well, thanks, Omar, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ted. Appreciate it. We'll surely get those phones back to you soon.
You know, uh, in addition to uh, uh, the events that uh, Omar just touched upon, again, uh, President June's speech tomorrow, uh, I think is going to be important because at that event, we'll be announcing a number of new partnerships uh, that will underscore ways of accessing content on multiple devices via the cloud. And we think this is going to be a very important milestone. And devices such as the tab and smartphones will play an important part in those scenarios. So now, I'd like to take the discussion to some other product groups, and in particular, digital imaging. You know, we've had uh, an amazing lineup in 2011, and this first product reinforces the idea of design enhancing the user experience as much as the aesthetic. Now first up is the ST700, our newest model and our top of the line dual view products. We're really excited about what dual view has meant to Samsung in its imaging business and we expand, expect to build upon that. Next up is the SH100. This is our fourth generation, yes, fourth generation wireless camera. We are continuing to lead and learn in this space. In addition to real-time uploads to Facebook and YouTube, the SH100 is the first camera that makes your Android smartphone become a remote control for the camera. Shots can be viewed to zoom in or zoom out and then taken directly from the phone. So by pressing just two buttons, the SH100 allows, lets you automatically back up your shots to your PC without even turning the device on. From there, we have the WB210. It packs a 12x optical zoom, 21 millimeter super wide shot mode, and a large 3.5 inch LCD screen in a body that's less than an inch thick. Finally, this is pretty cool here. Take a look at the Q10 Full HD camcorder. Now, as you'd expect, you know, it delivers fantastic quality full HD video through the BSI CMOS sensor. You know, but the real benefit and real trick is that the camcorder is designed, well, the left is in the room, for the ambidextrous. So whether you're using the, in your right hand or choosing to go to the left hand, it automatically adjusts with the flip of the screen. You know, the Q10 and our premium cameras both embrace smart experiences through an easy-to-use, touch-based user interface called Smart Access UI. It gives users the ability to drag, click, and control app-style icons and easily flip through your photos. Now, for our final segment, we'll move into the categories of IT and display. You know, we really see how the Smarter Life and its pillars can have transformative effect on both the form factor and the use cases of products to create entirely new consumer experiences. To discuss this, let's welcome, from our Enterprise Business Division, Doug Alberts. You know, I uh, understand that, you know, you've had quite a busy week already, you know? How many of you guys came through McCarran Airport and saw this big Samsung screen as you walked in? It, it's absolutely an amazing announcement. Why don't you tell us a little bit about well, it? Well, I almost fell off the lift. Nobody caught that, so that was, that was good. But we didn't have as many friends there no. <laughs> as we do today. But we unveiled the largest video wall of its kind in McCarran's D terminal. It's a 627 square foot, or if you measure like we do in displays, it's about 146 inch monitors. 100. Did I say? You oh, said 100. 100. 100. 100. 46 inch monitors uh, that can provide four times that of traditional HD. So it's really a marvel for advertisers and the perfect setting. We're happy to be a part of it. Okay. Congratulations to you and your team. You know, and while we're talking about this displays, let's talk a little bit about this year's sure. monitors. Sure. You know, we've seen a pattern, you know, over the last couple of years with our technology. 
and 3D is permeating the rest of our display offerings after launching on televisions, much like LED did. So what new is happening here? Yeah, this year's lineup features a full array of 3D LED monitors. First is the SA950 and the SA750. Both follow Samsung's ultra-slim design concept. Take a look at that. Uh, and when you really look at it one step further with its uniform back, um, you still have that pencil from before? Yeah, do you still want to use this? Is, this is the most used pencil I've ever seen. We need to take the pencil from there. To it here. still works there, Doug. We also have a multifunction version of this great monitor, the TA950. Both have Samsung's 2D to 3D conversion capability. You know, these 3D monitor capabilities would seem to be an obvious boon for, and I've got a couple of them at home, uh, big gaming kids, right? Yeah, I got a couple I think watching live today. <laughs> these monitors will truly provide a dynamic 3D gaming environment. But the business application shouldn't be overlooked here, uh, Tim. Uh, the monitors can also enhance use of specialty tools such as computer-aided design uh, or as well as uh, desktop PowerPoint. Anything to make my presentations look better would be well received. So uh, let's move from the desktop to mobile computing. You know, we've made some remarkable strides in establishing our presence in the U.S. market and a unique design philosophy. So it feels like we're ready to take another big leap in 2010. Yeah, we're ready. And two products in particular bring this point home. Right here is our first ultra premium laptop, the Samsung Notebook 9 series. This is truly a story of inspired design. It's a world class ultra thin notebook that weighs just 2.89 pounds with a depth of just under a half an inch. But the first thing you notice is the body. Tell you, man, it, it's clear we're using, you know, an entirely new material here that really allows us to create this streamlined design. Yeah, if you take a look here, um, the uh, 9 series has been crafted using Duralum. So what is Duralum? It's a lightweight alloy normally used in advanced aircraft design, over twice as strong as what you'll find in aluminum. Uh, we believe that this sturdy, exotic material will push the envelope on this premium offering. And it will look great for years as we have underwent exhausting testing to get to this point where we believe we're achieving a perfect balance of uh, material and design. You know, Doug, one of the defining characteristics of Samsung's laptops in the past few years is this delicate balance between design and performance. And we think the Notebook 9 series obviously seems to be taking that, you know, to another level. Uh, it certainly has, and we really wanted to reflect the personality of the user with this laptop. Strong and sleek, but subtle, enough to avoid being, I guess, overly flashy. Uh, look at the aerodynamic lines as you take a look at this. Um, the 9 Series, um, you don't have to worry about performance, so it complements the sleek design, I think, very well. I'm going to hand this to you, guys. about time I'm getting it. Yeah. It's not much of a workout, is it? It's not. It's pretty light. Yeah, let's talk about performance here. The super bright plus screen ensures the most accurate and vivid HD movies and games with incredible crispness and true-to-life picture quality. This is powered by 400 nit brightness. 1,300 to 1 contrast ratio, and 16 million colors. Can you see 16 million? I think I got them all. These, uh, these are groundbreaking display specs in a notebook PC. And this laptop is as fast as it is sleek. Uh, with Samsung's fast start technology and solid state drive, the 9 series can boot in just 12 seconds. 60% um, faster than a hard disk drive. <coughs> Uh, it can come out of sleep mode in just three seconds, something uh, I'm guessing we all wish we could do on that Monday morning. Or in Las Vegas. Or in Las Vegas. Well, uh, you know, I'm particularly interested in this next product Doug has for us. You know, it's a bit of uh, what you might call a hybrid, and we think it's an answer to an emerging question for the mobile user. You know, the emergence of the tablet PC market has opened up new mobile entertainment and communication experiences. The smaller form factor and intuitive touchscreens on devices like the Galaxy Tab have blended some of the best aspects of the laptop and smartphone experiences. But let's be honest, you know, there are times when the standard PC experience with the keyboard may be preferable. No doubt uh, writing a lengthy report on a touchscreen like this, uh, for example, is not the easiest task. And that got us thinking. So, what if you had a single device with the form factor of both the tablet and the PC? 
pretty impressive. You know, I think, I think you might have, you know, what is being called a tablet PC. <laughs> That's exactly what we have done with our sliding PC7 series. It's an entirely new and versatile mobile PC that begins its day in tablet form, taking advantage of multi-touch applications with Windows 7. But it's also got a sliding keyboard that allows it to transform uh, into a more traditional notebook. Tim, look how easy it is. Slide this keyboard out. And it locks right Smooth. into place. Uh, I can. Yeah, I know. I see the smiles. <laughs> but can I? Yeah, you can take it. This PC is perfect for everyone. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll make sure the other guys know we got the first real clap. <laughs> This PC is perfect for everyone. Um, we're, we're thinking students to mobile workers. Its true audience is as versatile as its user, whose needs are constantly changing from immersive activities as diverse as watching movies or actually viewing medical information. You know, Doug, that's uh, absolutely uh, an awesome product. And, uh, you know, it sounds like we have smart design and smart experiences pretty well covered in the IT space now. But what are you doing in the area of smart connections? Yep. Omar talked about this, his great Android devices like the Galaxy Tab. We've added one more app to the store with our Samsung Mobile Print app. Shortly this will be installed on our Android devices <laughs> and will connect Samsung's uh, printers via Wi-Fi or network link and let them print photos, uh, PDFs, and web pages directly from the devices. We will also launch this app for iOS as well. But this is the last smart connection. Um, I think the one that will change what users think of their monitor. Over here we have the CA550 uh, and CA750 central station monitors. For all the amazing capability and design of the Samsung notebooks we just talked about, a 14 inch screen at times, Tim, can seem a little bit limiting. So what if you had the ability to automatically and wirelessly turn a 27 inch or 23 inch monitor into a second screen without the need for cables or docking station. Hmm. You know, it sounds uh, a lot like uh, what we talked about with the one foot connection feature you know, that John mentioned. You know, you'd really be extending your capabilities without all the hassles and the need for those additional steps to establish that connection we all wrestle with. And that's what we have here, exactly what the central station can do. Central station enables users uh, to, to effortlessly move between notebook, uh, mobile computing, and advanced desktop computing by seamlessly unifying the workspace. Using an attached wireless USB 3.0 dongle, the central station monitor recognizes when the notebook is within a range of just over three feet. It automatically activates, connecting all peripherals and linking the screens together to provide a larger, more optimized working environment. And there's also an element of smart design here, too. We don't want to leave that out. The display panel is ultra thin, and the two-hinge neck allows users to adjust the screen height level or lower it to be flush with the laptop. Now, not sure we could have picked a better product to, uh, to end on, Doug. You know, I think it's a combination of design, experience, and connection that transforms the manner in which a product, in this case a monitor, is used. So, Doug, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. Thank you. You know, we set out today uh, to lay out an agenda for a smarter life in 2011. You know, we explored smart design, like our ultra-narrow bezel TVs that make the viewing experience more immersive than ever, and laptops that embrace futuristic and hybrid designs. We discussed experiences like Media Hub, delivered on the fastest networks and a smart access UI that makes our cameras more intuitive than ever. Finally, we showed you smart connections through Central Station and our wireless camera that continue to create richer, easier, smarter lives. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time today. Please make sure to stop over at the Samsung booth and take a look at BKU's keynote tomorrow afternoon for some exciting new announcements. Thank you very much. Enjoy.